Okay, we've reached the Frostback Mountain Pass. We are going to go to the home of the dwarves. Because, you know, Fantasy World has to have dwarves. We've seen a few out and about. But this is where a majority of them seem to live. What is this? I was not expecting that. <laughs> well, what do you know? They attacked. And they have stuff. Well, turn low gain does have a bounty out on this, so I guess I should have expected that. So, moving on. No, oh, you're not going to attack me too, are you? Into the underground? The thought of so much rock over one's head is disquieting. Okay. You people aren't going to attack me, though, right? He said that the Darkspawn attacked it the very next day. The Darkspawn took Lothering, did they? I don't know. I expect so, since there was no one there to stop them. Well, it won't be much longer until those monsters get here. There doesn't seem to be anyone fighting them now. Yes, Loghain is so preoccupied with this civil war that the blight is spreading, and he's not recognizing that fact. How am I supposed to live with no crafts to sell? I'll be ruined. Uh, we aren't. I go where the work is, and it isn't here. Maker's breath, is that? Oh, I beg your pardon. Can I help you, friend? Is something wrong? No, no, nothing at all. Just, uh, you know, thought I saw something. Since you are clearly looking at me, I would say that you do see something. Well, um, yes. Never you mind. Can I help you? What do you sell here? Well, little of this, little of that, you know, uh, used armor mostly. Nothing uh, that would really interest fine people like yourselves. Is it refreshing or unsettling that this merchant is reluctant to show us his wares? <sighs> That's an odd attitude for a merchant. Well, I'm considerate of my customer's time. That's all. What reassuring certainty. Let me take a look. Oh, uh, certainly. Okay, he's freaking out because there's a lot of Quinari items in his inventory. Hmm. So, uh, you're back, I see. What can I do for you? I'll be going then. Good. I mean, come back any time. He's obviously hiding something. He has a Kronari sword. He also had armor. So, you know. <laughs> What's he up to? I wonder if anything's going to come of that. Well, moving on. King Logain will not... Vieta, this land is held in trust for the sovereign Dwarven kings. I cannot allow entry at this time. King Loghain demands the allegiance of the Desher, or lords, or whatever you call them in your assembly. I am his appointed messenger. I don't care if you're the king's wiper. Orzammar will have none but its own until our throne is settled. I have urgent need to talk to your king. Who doesn't? If I don't get in, no one should. Orzammar has no king. Endrin I do can return to the stone not three weeks ago, sick over the loss of his sons. The assembly has gone through a dozen votes without agreeing on a successor. If it is not settled soon, we risk a civil war. I'm a Grey Warden. This treaty obliges Orzammar to me. The Wardens killed King Caelan and nearly doomed Ferelden. 
They're sworn enemies of King Loghain. Well, that is the royal seal. That means only the assembly is authorized to address it. Grey Warden, you may pass. You're letting in a traitor? And a foreigner? In the name of King Loghain, I demand that you execute this stain on the honor of Ferelden. That's enough. Raise your blade if you're so tough. I... I will at that. I'm a messenger of King Loghain. Kill each other as you will. But take your sodding fight off my doorstep. Uh, okay, this got out of hand. Well, let's go do some killing. Took out the caster. Oh, resist it. So you have won the battle, a close thing. Chump. I shall do it. Would have figured he had better stuff than that. I really do have to get better armor for Sten. Second time he was knocked out. I have to rest up before I head down into the deep roads or else he's going to get his ass handed to him. But anyway, Loghain's uh, guys are dead. Moving on. You've done me a service. That fool Imrek was barking for a week. Are all humans so touched? You are free to enter Orzammar, Grey Warden. Though I don't know what help you will find. Orzammar is what is essentially a the... Follow, Warden. Your arrival is a mixed blessing. We prefer that outsiders not witness our infighting. But your presence will be tolerated. The dwarves live underground majority of the time. Most of them do live underground. There are some that live on the surface, live in towns among humans and all that. But for the most part, this is where you will find most dwarves. The dwarves live... In, this is the capital of Urzamar. There used to be a large number of these cities they call Thogs or Thags or something along that line. Where dwarves lived all underground and all interconnected between a series of roads called the Deep Roads, which were tunnels dug underground, which spanned like the entire width of Ferelden. Well, after the Darkspawn arrived and the first blight began, they lost access to a majority of the Deep Roads, and this was only a one of a few of the thags that were remaining. So, majority of dwarves live in this one city right here. Now, the dwarves have a treaty and a certain level of respect for the Grey Wardens, in which they do not hold the same level of respect for a majority of humans. They see humans as people who are living away from the Darkspawn and all that kind of stuff, because the Darkspawn live underground majority of their time. So the dwarves are spending a lot of their time fighting the Darkspawn when humans are living on the surface. The Grey Wardens, on the other hand, are people who have chosen, uh, mostly human as it would appear, chosen to fight the Darkspawn, dedicate their lives to that. So that gives them a certain respect with the dwarves. And this treaty which we have, which long ago the dwarves signed, so the army of dwarves would fight along the Grey side of the Grey Wardens against the Archdemon and the Darkspawn. That's what's pretty much given us access here. So let's go take a quick look before I end the episode. Fair journeys, Warden. Red, please. Now that's a thing of beauty, daughter. If you work hard like Branca, all Orzammar will know your name. Mother, I don't want to be like her. She... Don't say that. Not to me, not to anyone. Now get back to the forge. I want to see more details. Yes, Mother. <laughs> it shall be done. I trust Vala, Warden. It is begun. Hmm, I thought that would have been another entry. There we go. 
bread. I haven't eaten in days. Yes. Something you also notice while running around inside of Orzmar. There are elves in the Kunari lands, then. There are elves everywhere. Hmm, yes. Well, I've heard that the Kunari actually put the elves in charge over the humans. Is that true? Some of them. Only some? Which ones are they? The ones who belong in charge. That is the way of the Kun. How does this Kun determine who belongs in charge? The Tamas runs evaluate everyone and place them where their talents merit. But elves in general merit higher places than humans in Kunari society? Some of them. Back where we began. It's like talking to a water wheel. Alright. Something we'll also notice while we're about the dwarves. As we're running around in Orzammar... Loading? Come on. Anytime now, come on. It is the assembly who makes a king, and a king who nominates his successor. None of it is carried in the blood. Or, as now, when someone tries using the assembly to pull a coup. Who's to say what my father said in his final hours, when the usurper Harrowmont was the only one by his side? I'll have you thrown in prison. You've bitten off more than you can chew. Handlers, separate these dashers in the diamond quarter. I will not have Balin incite a riot. You not speak that way about the man who should be king! <laughs> <laughs> Well, that looks like it got out of hand. <laughs> yeah, I'll just say this before I end the episode, because I don't want to get too involved in storyline missions here. The dwarves lived by a very strict caste system, where you have the kind of noble, and then you have the noblemen of the world, of the dwarven society, then you have the sort of... I, I forget what they are, they're pretty much like the dregs of society, the lower class people who, regardless of what kind of like cultural achievements they can make or monetary achievements, they'll never like rise above that. And the best thing that they could really hope to do is to gain some sort of level of honor by venturing into the deep roads and just killing Darkspawn. It's pretty significant change, well I mean, even though the people of Ferelden and all that have their own sort of caste system where you have the noble houses and all that kind of stuff. It's not quite as severe as this, uh, the Dwarven Society. And kind of an anomaly in, anomaly in modern society where, in real life anyway, where a more capitalistic approach is generally taken. And Sten, I guess it was a reason why they brought this up when the two were wandering around inside of Orzammar, was where the Kronari, where Sten comes from, the, whether you're human or elf or whatever, you are evaluated based on your worth rather than, like, the genetics of whether you're human or elf. Pretty significant change from either Orzammar or Ferelden. But, uh, yeah, there we go. End in the episode. Bam.